Hi, I'm Lance Cottrell, Chief Scientist at Intrepid. Photos are everywhere on the internet, but how you pick your profile photo can actually undermine your online undercover operations. The internet has become a very visual medium. When you're interacting on social media, people expect to see pictures of you. But where do you find those pictures if you're working an alias? The easy choice, and one we see people make all the time, is to just grab an existing photo off the internet, either off stock photos or some existing person's social media account. The problem is, that can be easily detected. There's a number of tools, the best known of which is Google's image search, that allows you to identify photos that exist somewhere else on the internet. So if you choose a publicly available photo as your profile, someone can catch you. In fact, here's an interesting example. I recently went through my LinkedIn profile looking for people who'd requested to friend me. And within just a few, I found this guy, Eric. Eric is obviously, as you can see, a stock photo. But he's used that as his LinkedIn profile, and he's managed to get plenty of friends, so a lot of people aren't checking it. But it only took me a couple of seconds to discover that. Facial recognition is another complication. Any photo that's been captured biometrically can be recognized online, and social media companies and many other organizations keep records of millions of faces. So if you borrow a face from a social media company, say Facebook, and use it somewhere else, it will be recognized as that person. Even if it's not a publicly available photo, the face can still be recognized. So this makes it particularly dangerous to use pictures of friends, family, or coworkers for your alias because their faces are almost certainly already in those databases. Making things worse, social media accounts can't just have one photo. If you only have that one profile photo, it looks kind of weird, especially in visual websites like Facebook or Instagram. You're expected to have many different photos. Of course, they all have to have the same face in them. And that face needs to be recognized as being the same face, both by the facial recognition algorithms and by any humans who are looking at it. It needs to look real. And it can't just be copy and paste of the same face. It needs to be different expressions, different lighting, different situations, maybe different haircuts. It gets very complicated to make that look realistic. And of course, it needs to have different backgrounds. You can't have all of your profile pictures and everything on Facebook being taken in the same room. You're going to be out on vacation or at restaurants or in different places. And so you need to make sure that whatever face you're using is on different backgrounds, either because you created entirely new photos or because you transplanted that face into other existing backgrounds. And then those backgrounds have to be identity correct. They need to be in the correct location. If there's street signs, they need to be in the right language, the right kind of cars, the steering wheel on the right side or left side. All that needs to be consistent with the identity you're putting forward, or it can immediately expose it. Fortunately, it's often possible to get away without recognizable human faces in your profile. It's very common for people to use pictures of their pets or other animals, or team logos, avatars, cartoon characters, or sometimes even famous celebrities that are obviously not supposed to be you, but you're just using that picture in your profile. There's a lot of different ways of sourcing those, and in many cases it may be socially appropriate, but in others not so much. For example, in LinkedIn, if I have a cartoon character as my avatar, that's going to look really strange. Additionally, when you need multiple photos, it's often possible to have at least some of them not have a recognizable face in it. So for example, if you're wearing a ski mask or a scuba mask or a motorcycle helmet, or the lighting is just really dark and murky, that allows you to set up photos where you don't have quite the same stringent requirements for that machine and human recognizable face. By paying close attention to how you source your photos and keeping these risks in mind, you can avoid these identity exposing pitfalls and keep your alias intact. Thanks for watching this episode. I hope you found it useful and interesting, and if so, please like and subscribe, and then click the bell icon to be notified each time new episodes become available. We upload new content every other week, and I'd love to hear from you what topics you'd like to see me cover. Let me know down in the comments. Till next time, ciao.